We've all heard about wapiti, but we very rarely get to see true wapiti in the wild. Well, quite a few years ago, I joined my mate Steve Gamble on the helicopter, and we went and chased them around, not hunting, just having a look. And what a beautiful sight they are. Look at this, this is a serious hunting weapon. This is a semi-automatic 2D3 rifle. And this is what the professional deer hunters use and there's still a small group of hunters in this country that make a living shooting deer. And uh, they actually do them out of helicopters like this huge 500D model. It belongs to my, my good friend Steve Gamble. We're hunting out of Tian now. We're actually sitting on a saddle right now, as I speak, at about 3,000 feet, 1,000 metres above sea level, somewhere between Tianao and the west coast. The Tasman Sea is just over there a couple of miles, and the head of the Glazenock Valley just over here. This is magnificent hunting country, and I mean, even if you weren't shooting deer, what a place to spend a day. We're going to join Steve and his hunter, Jeff Carter, and see them in action chasing the deer in the hills. As well as seeing the deer hunters in action, I was hoping for a glimpse of the rare wapiti. The first snow of winter has coated the tops in Fiordland, and when Steve called and suggested I get there quickly, as he'd seen some wapiti out in the open, I was on the first plane to Tianao, because the snow and the helicopter activity would soon drive them into the thick bush. The wapiti block comprises a large section of Fiordland National Park and it had been close to helicopter hunting for red deer. They're not allowed to shoot wapiti from helicopters, but the block has just been opened for red deer recovery. It was too good an opportunity to miss. With luck, we would get some pictures of these majestic animals in the wild. And this country is seriously wild. And uh, there's a lot more wapiti here than people realise. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they think... You know, a bit like the moose, a lot of people think that uh, the wapiti is sort of uh, almost gone, but uh, you see quite a few do you, Steve? Um, well, we went out for a run the other morning and we've seen, what, sort of 20? 20, 20, I suppose, just in a matter of about an hour. Yeah. Some of them were very nice wapiti too, but um, it's just when you're trying to cover the area on foot and with the senses and smell that the deer have got, sort of thing, um, you know, no wonder people realise it, or don't realise the number of wapiti that are there. It's got a pretty hard to beat the eye on this guy. And there it was, my first glimpse of a wapiti. What a beautiful sight. These mega-sized deer were first introduced to this country from their native North America as a gift from President Roosevelt, himself a keen big game hunter in 1906. With their large cream-colored bodies, they're easily distinguished from the smaller common red deer. And among hunters, a mature wapiti bull with its huge antlers is the most highly prized trophy in the country and the hardest to obtain. We saw cows and young bulls several years away from trophy size, but they're still big animals. Interbreeding with the more aggressive red stags and official culling have reduced their numbers, and now wapiti are restricted to the one block in Fiordland. This remote wilderness is inaccessible in many places, providing some protection from hunters, and they also finally enjoy some official protection, as the helicopter hunters may not take any animal which has more than 25% wapiti blood. It's a tribute to the wapiti that they've survived this long with all the mismanagement and various things that have gone on with the wapiti over the years. And uh, you've yeah. got to keep the red deer under control, otherwise there's no future here for the wapiti. Yeah. They're just so dominant that um, they impregnate the cows all the time and um, they just end up with rubbish. We also saw some chamois, which are not as common as they once were because the Department of Conservation shoots them from helicopters to reduce their numbers. These pretty little mountain antelope from Austria are nimble and sure-footed on the steepest of rock faces. And while taking a break from flying, I asked Steve how many deer he shoots for the commercial market. <laughs> oh, I don't know, we normally do somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 every year. And Jeff, you've been, uh, you've been a shooter for uh, quite a few years now. How many different pilots have you worked with? Oh, dozens. Yeah. 15, I, I last count was 15. 15, eh? Is Steve, is Steve one of the better ones? Uh, he's up there, I'm still alive. <laughs> he's still alive? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, I mean, did, does the danger side of it uh, worry you anymore? Or you fast, you, you know? I wouldn't be here if I would have done What's a good day, you know? How many, to go out in the morning, uh, what's a good morning shoot? 
a, a good day sort of shooting is probably good 20 deer. 20 deer? Yeah, maybe twice, sometimes three days a day. Yeah, yeah. And have you done a lot of the live capture? Yeah, I did all that. Yeah. Did all that. And is that, don't seem to be doing so much of that, Steve. Why is that? Um, I still do it, but um, it's just that the money's gone out of it. Um, it's more in the exotic type deer at the moment, sort of, you know, white tail and sand bird, sort of, sort of deer farms and uh, trophy farms and that sort of thing. So you travel all around the country looking for those uh, exotic animals? Um, yeah, I do, yeah. Mm. Sort of go up to North Island once a year, usually. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what sort of price do you get for the meat uh, if, they're, if they're headshot? What are you getting? Um, we're averaging about $4 a kilo, sort of roughly on a, a skin-on basis, um, which sort of equates to about $200 a deer average. About $200 a deer, so if you're getting 20 a day, a day that's $4,000, two or three trips, that's worthwhile. Well, you need it in the big machines. In the smaller machines, you don't need quite so many deer. Well, we're really only farming them here. Just, um, just sort of, as they come out, we just um, keep the numbers down. And it's about it, you know? it was in the um, old days when the uh, money was there. Um, it was just about everyone was trying to get the last deer back, so the deer have since built up quite considerably since then. And um, now, sort of, all we do is really um, we're just creaming them all the time. You know? Yeah, so uh, they'll, they'll never get the last one, will they? Well, no, we'll look at the country. Look yeah. at this. It's, it's a huge deer farm. <laughs> it's a big deer farm. <laughs> And I notice you use that uh, semi-automatic 223, uh, Jeff. You prefer the rifle to the shotgun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no skill using a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> We're all entitled to our own opinion. <laughs> but uh, I've got to try that shotgun. I've got to try that. But you um, you get a better price as the head or neck shot, don't you? Yeah, we try, yeah. I try and have them here. After seeing the professionals at work, I thought I should try this helicopter hunting. So Steve and I went for an evening hunt at the back of the station where we were staying near Tiana. The scrub country holds a lot of deer, and we spotted a nice spiker, or young stag, just as the light was failing. It's an exciting way to spend a day. Everything we've seen on this program was filmed today. We started in the morning when the boys went out early looking for some deer for Jeff to hunt. That's how, how uh, Steve pays the bills. Then we went looking for some wapiti, filmed some very rare wapiti, saw some chamois, and then finished the evening. I uh, got the shotgun, nailed one out of the machine, which will Steve's going to sell. He's just put me the guts out of it now, and that'll help pay the bills for the machine. What a day in the middle of Fiordland. National Park.